Spring is here, which means RV season is just around the corner. We're so excited that it's spring, even if it's not warm, spring is officially here. If you guys are new here, I'm Mike. I'm Stephanie. We're Life Rerouted, a full-time RV couple, and we have been full-time RVing since 2018. And if you guys are new to RVing, this is your video, because we're gonna tell you guys why 2023 is the perfect year to start RVing. Now we were completely green when we got into RVing and you might be too. You might be a little bit intimidated about just getting started. But RVing really isn't that intimidating and we're here to tell you how you can get started and why this year is the year to chase that dream of RVing. And make sure to stay tuned to the very end because we have some money saving tips as well. RVing has almost never been more popular than it is today in 2023. Now, some people might hear that and say, oh, that's a negative thing. There are too many people out there RVing. It's driving the costs up. Campgrounds are crowded. And there are definite cons to it. But that also means there's a lot of pros to RVing right now. One of those pros is just, there's so much more available for RVers. Because of the popularity of RVing, there has never been more opportunity to RV than there is today. There are more campgrounds being built pretty much every day. There's a new campground springing up in areas where we have never been able to stay before because there weren't campgrounds there in the past. Also, there are more programs and discount programs. We're gonna tell you about some of our favorite ones at the end and how much money they save us but there are more programs out there because RVing is so popular. You might look at us and say, well, of course they're confident about RVing. They've been on the road for five years, full time in an RV for five years. But to be honest, we were completely green when we started. And YouTube is where I started myself in order to get some confidence. And then when we went on our first shakedown trip, I knew what to do. And I'm so glad that I did that research that gave me the confidence to do that. Right here, YouTube, great resource. It's where we learned everything about RVing because we had never RVed before. We have had some friends that wanted to get into RVing who have come out to our campsite to check out our rig. And I love going through stuff with new people because it's a great place to start as well. If you know somebody who has an RV, most of the time they would love to show you how theirs works. You might think, well, if I'm going to RV, I have to buy an RV to get started. And you honestly do not. There are a lot of options out there to actually RV without having your own. We are never the channel that's gonna say, buy the fancy thing, buy the new thing. You have to have the best gadgets to get on the road. You don't. You don't even have to have a camper to start RVing. Renting an RV is a great place to start because you don't have to commit to anything other than maybe a long weekend or a week on the road. There are tons of companies out there. We have personally never used any of these. We're not affiliated with them at all, but even just a quick Google search will show you. Cruise America, uh, RV Share, Outdoorsy. These are like Airbnbs for campers. You don't have to tow it. You don't have to own it. You basically just show up, the camper's at your site, and you get to spend how much ever time you have booked in this camper. We stayed at an awesome campground last year, I think, in Pigeon Forge, and they had these cool like Airstreams or off-brand Airstreams for rent. I think that'd be cool even for us. Yeah. We've been in this camper for five years. It'd be kind of cool to stay in a different camper sometimes too. Renting an RV is a great place to start. Maybe you guys have a friend who's not using their camper that would be willing to let you borrow it, or maybe even just going with them on a weekend so that you can get used to the RV lifestyle. Some campers aren't that great for like bunking up in. We now have an amazing couch from Rec Pro that we can sleep, pull out sofa and people can sleep on it. But if you have a buddy with a big fifth wheel, there's at least two sleeping options in there. Just tag along one weekend, say, hey, can I crash with you for a night? Just see what this RV thing's about. Chances are they love RVing and they want to share that with you. 
And since it is springtime, it's kind of the unofficial kickoff to RV season. Maybe you guys bought an RV recently and you don't know where to start. This video is for you as well. You bought that camper, you're still maybe intimidated about taking it out. Mike and I's best advice for that first night in your camper is do a close shakedown trip. I highly recommend doing a shakedown trip somewhere close to home, maybe under an hour. It is a great way to start. You don't have as much pressure to drive as far and you are able to go home if you need to. Go someplace close, test out everything and relax for that first night in the camper. I would suggest finding a campground that has water, electric, and sewage, making sure that everything works in your camper and then getting used to it. Or even a trip to nowhere. Maybe you guys are able to keep the RV in your driveway. I highly recommend just staying in your driveway in your camper for at least one night, getting used to the layout of stuff and it's also the cheapest way to stay. Whether you've already bought an RV, you're just thinking about buying an RV, whatever stage you're at, I do want to stress the point that you do not have to buy all the fancy gadgets when you get that RV. We did a video on this a while back about how you don't have to spend all this money on all this stuff for your camper. Buy the essentials and hit the road and buy stuff as you go. We've been in this camper full time for almost five years now and it took us four years before we even put solar on the camper. Everybody thinks you have to have solar to go on the road. You don't. You don't have to have the fancy levelers. You don't have to have any, any upgrades. This camper comes ready to go. Buying just the essentials is a great way to save money. It keeps your camper less cluttered and it also makes you feel more like you're actually camping. So just buying the essentials right off the bat keeps your costs down. And since the cost of everything seems to be going up these days, including RVing, that can help you save a little bit of money when you're starting off. You don't have to buy all those fancy things. If you end up getting an RV and hitting the road, get your bare essentials, get the things you need to hook up your water, your electric, your sewage, and whatever you need just to be comfortable in this camper. The camper is not the destination. You are taking this to different places to enjoy that area. You don't have to have all the fancy upgrades. So don't be intimidated if you see these social media posts about all the upgrades this person did to their camper. That doesn't mean you have to. You can start with what you have and hit the road. And by not buying all the non-essentials right away, it keeps your costs down. And as you know these days, that is very important. And that leads us into some of the ways that we can save money RVing these days. And first off, I would suggest going on shorter trips. Being a tourist in your home state is a really great way to start RVing. It may give you a, a better appreciation of the state that maybe you're from, and it keeps your costs down as well. When Mike and I first started traveling like seven years ago, we were shocked by people in these towns that had never done the things in their town. And then we spent some time reflecting and we said, we've never done some of the things in our hometown. And I think that's because you have this mindset, oh, I'll, I'll see that one day, I'll do that one day. But why not take that RV to this cool place that might be two hours from you instead of going all the way across the country to see something? Using less fuel is going to save you money on fuel. Now you're still staying at places with the camper and you're gonna have to pay to stay at most of these places. There are lots of programs and clubs you can join to have a discount on those stays. One that comes to mind is Good Sam's. They give you a discount off of a lot of RV parks. If you're a KOA fan, there's a KOA club where you can save a percentage at every KOA that you stay at. You have to weigh how much you're spending on these memberships against how much you're gonna actually be staying at them. But if you guys like KOAs or the majority of campgrounds I feel like these days take Good Sam and I think it's 10% off most of your stays. So you just have to weigh the cost of those to offset those costs. 
And like Mike said, if you're staying in your own state, get a state park pass. If you're really wanting to see national parks and you have a lot around you, get a national park pass because that'll save you on entry to these parks and sometimes save you a little bit at the campground. National park passes usually take two or three times visiting them to pay for themselves and I highly recommend a national park pass. One of our favorite programs, and I'm sure you've heard us talk about it before, is Harvest House. If you're not familiar with Harvest House, it is a membership program where you can stay at all kinds of breweries, distilleries, wineries, um, museums. Golf, golf courses golf now. Courses. And they have partnered with Boondockers Welcome, which is kind of an Airbnb program where you can take your camper to people's houses. Some of our favorite stays have been at Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome. We have some videos up here you guys can check out. And if you are interested in Harvest Host, click our link down below. Now the majority of these sites are boondocking, which means no hookup. So if that's intimidating, you don't have to start there. But it is a good way to save money if you're staying several nights in your camper. So if you're thinking about RVing, please don't be intimidated by it. Start with what you have right now. If you're not ready to make the leap to buy the RV, go rent one, go check out your buddies, go just get a taste of it before you make that leap into buying an RV. If you finally decided to buy that RV, you don't have to buy the fanciest one. You don't have to upgrade everything right off the bat. Get that RV, get the essentials, and hit the road. Hit the road close to home. Don't take those huge trips. Just do something close by. It may be the most amazing trip you've ever taken two hours from your home. Everybody has to start somewhere. And my biggest suggestion for you guys is to just get started. Do something small, do something close to home, something easy. Just get out there and get your feet wet. I hope this video helped you all. We are here to help you and encourage you to get on the road because we wanna meet you. We wanna see you guys out RVing, chasing those adventures, chasing those dreams. If this video helped you guys out, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you guys are subscribed, following along with our adventures. And we can't wait to see you out there. If this video helped you out at all, please hit that thumbs down below. <laughs> if the video helped, thumbs down. Give us a thumbs down, <laughs> please. Good night.